What's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about how to incorporate time into our C Sharp programs. So there's a couple different classes that allow us to incorporate time into our programs and I'll be going over how to implement these classes. So to get started I'm going to show you the documentation for the two classes that I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm going to fire up Google Chrome here and look up the timer class in C sharp. So this is the system.timers class and as you can see here it comes from the system.timers namespace. The, the way that we're going to implement the code here is by basically we um, we declare a timer, so we declare an instance of the timer, and then we set an interval, you know, so like a callback interval, and then we basically just specify what what do we want to be called when we hit this callback, right? So if we have an interval, some amount of time, what function needs to be called at the end, you know, when this timer elapses, essentially. So the way that we're gonna implement this we're going to start a new, we'll create a new project in Visual Studio. So one of the important things to notice about the timer class is that it works best with static classes. So if you don't understand static, um, it's not a big issue, but basically you'll notice when we create this project here that the main class is static. So, you know, you'll notice this right away. So what we're going to do is create a console app on the .NET framework. And we'll click next here. And then for the project name, I'm just going to make it timer class test. And I'm going to do this on the .NET framework 4.7.2. As always, this should work with just about every .NET framework. So I'm going to press create here. So this is going to be a console application, right? So, you know, there's no graphic user interface or anything. It's just, just the console. And what we're going to be trying to do here is create, you know, a callback after some amount of elapsed time. So the first thing that we need to do is add in the timer namespace. So we do this by saying using system.timers, just that easy. So now we need to create a create an instance of the timer class. So by an instance, it's basically just, you know, create some variable of the timer class that we can then use to reference all of the functions of the timer class. So the way that we're going to do this is by saying public static. Oops, I'm sorry, I did this at the wrong spot. So you'll also notice though that this main, you know, our main function here, it is static. So that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier that a static class, we're going to want to use this system.timers namespace. This is basically the system.timers namespace is made for static classes. You'll even notice that in their documentation right here, they have a static main. So like I was saying though, we need to create an instance of the timer class. So we say timer, you know, so timer class, we're going to name our time or instance a timer. And this equals a new instance of the class. And now um, upon instantiation here, we can actually set the interval right here. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to see, but one of the constructors allows us to set the interval. So the interval is a double. And it says in, you know, within their little message box here, specified number of milliseconds. So a millisecond is a thousandth of a second, right? So that means if we set our interval to a thousand, you know, put in this just 1000 right here as our interval, that means one second is the interval of time for our timer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to set our timer, a timer to 1000 milliseconds or one second. Next, we need to essentially 
we need to create some sort of event handler for when this timer elapses. So the way that we do that is by saying a timer, oops, I'm sorry, I need to make this a public static timer up top. But then the way that we're going to create you know, an, uh, an event handler for the timer is by saying a timer dot, oops, dot elapsed, I'm sorry. A timer dot elapsed, and then you do plus equals, and then you can actually just press tab, and Visual Studio will create the event handler for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Um, so you'll notice that essentially what it does, you know, the underlying code here. So it creates this function, this event handler called a timer underscore elapsed. So a timer underscore elapsed is, you know, it accepts two arguments, the, the sender and the event arguments E. And then it also has this line down here, throw new not implemented exception that really only gets called if this timer never elapses. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment that out. So now that we have, you know, this is the event handler. So now what we need to basically do is just say, um, we're gonna enable it. So enabled equals true. And then we're also gonna say auto reset. So this means that, you know, once, once it elapses once, we're gonna start over and keep going again and again and again. And then finally, we say start. Oops, my bad, start is a function. So a timer dot start. So at this point in time, you know, if our code was running, the timer would start its execution. So it'd be counting in milliseconds from zero to a thousand. So the way that we're gonna keep track of how many times our event handler gets called is by creating a public static int count. Uh, I'll name this seconds count and set this equals to zero. So now what we need to do upon our, you know, our event handler gets called, so it's hit a thousand milliseconds, we'll say, we'll print um, our variable, so seconds count plus seconds. So now when we run this, we should see, you know, just essentially a seconds timer. It's just keeping track of the amount of seconds that our program has been running. And one other thing that I have to do is put console.readKey in my main. So this is what keeps my console window open until I press a key. That way, that way I'll know, you know, when when the, when for the program to end. So one other thing that I forgot to do is to say seconds count plus plus. So we need to add, uh, we need to add one to our seconds count. That's the equivalent of saying, you know, plus plus is the equivalent of saying this right here. So seconds count would equal seconds count plus one. So I'm gonna restart this now and make this console window larger and you'll notice that we have just our seconds just being counted just one at a time this is basically just keeping track and you'll even notice over here in our diagnostic session this is following to a t right it's exactly the amount of time you know a thousand milliseconds is one second so right now we're just keeping track of how many seconds our program has been running but there's a lot of other useful things that you can do with time. You know, I'm not going to tell you what to do with it. That's up to you and your own projects. But time is crucial to being able to build dynamic programs. So that was the timer class. Now we're going to take a look at another class called the dispatcher timer. So I will take a look here. Um, so dispatcher timer in C sharp. So this is the documentation for the dispatcher timer. And the dispatcher timer works best for non-static classes, right? So an example of a non-static main is like if you had a WPF application. So the way that we'll do the dispatcher timer is, um, so it's through the system that windows that threading namespace. So let's go ahead and start up a new project to demonstrate the dispatcher timer. So create a new project. And 
I will do WPF app on the .NET framework. So go ahead and press next here and I'll name this dispatcher underscore timer underscore demo. And once again, I'll be doing this on the .NET framework 4.7.2 and press create. So now we're gonna get let Microsoft Visual Studio create our project here. And here we go. So I'm gonna create, or essentially just drag and drop a text block here. And I'm gonna use this text block just to keep track of the output. So the amount of seconds that our timer has. So you'll see what I'm saying here in a second. Um, so just right away, I'm gonna make I want to make the text alignment in the center just because I think it, it looks better. So you do that by text alignment and then center. And then I'm also going to change the font size real quick. So I'm going to set this to 48. So a little bit bigger just, you know, so we can see it easier. And then also changing the text, I'm going to set it to zero seconds because upon, you know, the program instantiation, we're at zero seconds. And then I'm also gonna name this text block. So I'm gonna name it seconds block. So now within our C sharp code, we're going to do a similar process as we did for the timer class. We're gonna go ahead and add our system.windows.threading namespace. And now we're going to you know, create an instance of the dispatcher timer class. So the way that we do this is by typing in dispatcher timer, and now we name our object. So I'm gonna name it this timer and set that equal to a new dispatcher timer, new instance of the dispatcher timer class. So with this one, you actually can't specify the interval on your constructor. Uh, so that's a little bit different than the timer class, but um, you there is an interval property of the dispatcher timer class. So we'll get into that here in a second. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create our event handler or you know our callback function for this object. So you do that by setting the dot tick property and then you just create a new event handler and then you actually just name the event handler here. So I'm gonna follow the naming convention and just name it dis timer underscore tick. And then that's gonna be red because this function doesn't exist yet. We'll get into that in just a second. So this timer dot interval, so this is where you specify the interval, you set that equal to a new time span. So the time span is kind of nice because there's actually five different you know ways to set a time span. I'm gonna use the hours, minutes, and seconds, but I definitely encourage you to experiment with that, um, the different amounts of time that you can get into. So I'm gonna set it to zero, zero, 001, so that's um, hours, minutes, and then seconds. So one second time interval, and then you just say start. So this timer dot start. Now we need to create our, you know, our callback function, I guess, or event handler. So you say, you know, public void and then name it. So the name has to match what you set your event handler to. And then you put in the object sender and the event handler B, just like that. Oh, I'm sorry, this is event args, not event handler. So event arguments E, and now we can actually create our variable for holding time. So we're gonna say public int seconds count equals zero. And now every time that our timer ticks, right? So after one second, we're gonna increment our seconds count by one. And then we're also going to set our, oops, let's see here, seconds block dot text. So we're gonna set our seconds block dot text equal to the seconds count plus seconds, just like that. So what we should see when we run this program is that our graphic user interface, you know, it just updates every second and it just shows us exactly how many seconds this program's been running. So we're gonna go ahead and click start and let the program build. And here we go. 
So we do see uh, just basically an exact counter of how long this program has been running. So this is just going right along and every single time after one second the disk timer underscore tick event handler is called and we increment our seconds count by one and then we just output that as text. Alright so I'm trying to open more direct lines of communication so I created a discord server it's named sharp tank. Um, the link to it is in the description down below. Please feel free to join. You know, you can ask questions or if you just want to talk about coding in general. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and got what you were looking for out of it. And please like and subscribe so that I know that you support the content that I'm creating. And as always, stay safe.